the longest I've done a very strict, like an actual standard ketogenic diet with low carbs, restricted protein and high fat was maybe like a month or two. But the cyclical ketogenic diet where I cycle between eating high carbs and uh, lower carbs as well as a targeted ketogenic diet where you consume carbs at specific times around the workouts, that I've been doing even up to like, you know, eight years. Hey, my name is Seem and in this video I'm gonna tell you why I'm not doing a strict keto diet and why I don't think that it's the best idea and instead I'm doing a cyclical keto diet. So like I said in the beginning, I have done like a strict therapeutic keto diet for maybe like a few months. I do think that, you know, from a therapeutic side, it uh, has a lot of benefits, like life-changing effects in people who have epilepsy or some other more serious medical condition uh, where they need to maintain more stable blood sugar levels, where they need to, yeah, suppress mTOR pathway and etc. However, most people, 95% of people don't fall into that category. They don't need to be that strict with their keto diet and they don't need to be on a low carb diet or especially they don't need to restrict protein for sure. From my own experience then uh, when I did the strict keto diet, yeah, being on such a low protein intake is definitely not the most optimal for you know physical performance and uh, in the long term it can also have like a negative effect on longevity as well. Being in a therapeutic state of ketosis, high amounts of ketones, uh, low levels of insulin, low mTOR, it can for sure have some positive effects of longevity and uh, lifespan, at least it does in some uh, animal models, but I don't think that uh, that it's so like black and white. There's also benefits to mTOR, there's also benefits to insulin, there's also benefits to eating high protein and high carbs. So um, in a practical real world scenario, I don't think that a keto diet is the most optimal for longevity and there's no human evidence to suggest that for the average person who doesn't have any of these superior medical conditions, they don't need to be on that kind of a strict keto diet. It's a trap. When it comes to physical performance, then carbs are obviously superior for higher intensity sports and uh, especially weightlifting. You don't need carbs to build muscle, you don't need carbs to get stronger but from my own experience I do have seen that uh, eating more carbs has a positive impact on my performance I build more muscle I recover faster I'm stronger at the gym more powerful everything else is kind of better when it comes to fitness and the sports side if I do eat more carbs being in ketosis can have also positive effects on mental performance but the difference isn't that big like I don't notice any difference because I also do intermittent fasting I think I can get most of the benefits of uh, therapeutic ketosis even by by doing intermittent fasting every day so I eat one meal a day and that already keeps me in a state of uh, some ketosis the vast majority of the day especially after becoming keto adapted so my body has you know gotten used to using fat for fuel it's not reliant on carbs it's not reliant on meal times and I can go for an entire day without eating even if I ate carbs the night before and I don't get any energy dips I don't get any mood swings I don't get any brain fog and those kind of things uh, so yeah carbs don't affect my mental performance negatively they only affect my physical performance positively and I don't think I need to be on a strict keto diet to maximize some sort of longevity benefits because those longevity benefits are mostly reliant of actually the pathways that get activated while you're fasting. So intermittent fasting in my opinion is kind of a more superior way of uh, maintaining and achieving the benefits of ketosis and keto adaptation without you necessarily needing to be on a strict keto diet and at the same time you can gain the benefits of the carbs and uh, the higher protein intake with the inverted fasting without necessarily yeah restricting your protein or restric restricting your carbs winning so there we have it this is the reason why i'm not doing a strict keto diet i don't think that it's necessary i don't feel any you know improvements i get all of the benefits that i ex experience on a strict keto diet with intermittent fasting and eating one meal a day. I get the benefits of mental acuity and mental clarity with the one meal a day and intermittent fasting. And at the same time, I'm still able to boost my performance and maximize the benefits I get at the gym uh, with eating more carbohydrates. Now, of course, the situation could be completely different if I didn't do intermittent fasting. If I ate the standard American diet with three meals a day, then I do think that the keto diet is superior to that in that scenario. But, you know, because of the intermittent fasting window, yeah, I get the benefits of ketosis and ketones already in that state. Of course, it's not that deep of a ketosis. I'm not going to go into a ketosis level of uh, 2.4 or even 1.5 maybe, uh, but it doesn't matter. I don't think that you need to be in that deep ketosis all the time to get those benefits. And uh, yeah, I would only need to be around maybe like 0 0.3, 0 0.5. Like this on the edge of ketosis is that's where you all 
already get the vast majority of benefits, at least when it comes to like mental clarity and being fat adapted on a regular basis. Do you need to be one meal a day? I don't think so. You can already get a lot of the benefits with 16 and 8 method of fasting. Uh, but the only caveat would, to that would be that, um, yeah, you may get a bit hungrier because of not being that fat, fat adapted. If you want to learn more about these things, then check out my book, Metabolic Autology. But on that facts watching this video, make sure you click like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.